Hey guys, happy Monday. It's read aloud time, spring according to Humphrey. We are on chapter 10. It's called Spectacular Signs of Spring. I know we've been having lots of beautiful signs of spring all around. We've been so lucky with the nice weather. So let's see what Humphrey and Og and all their friends are up to. Here we go. Spring almost ruined my week at Cassie's house. Don't get me wrong, she took excellent care of me. She even took me out of my cage, which I enjoyed, especially when my friends make mazes for me to run. But Cassie would also, sorry, but Cassie was also worried, worried, worried about finding signs of spring. And as the week went on, she got more and more worried. Do some deep breathing, her mom said when Cassie moaned that she couldn't find one new thing to add to her list. I'm busy, Cammie said when Cassie begged her to help. Cassie's dad took her to the park one day. They were gone for hours, but when she came back, she was almost in tears. Sure, the grass is starting to turn green and the trees have buds on them, but they're already on the list. Mrs. Brisbane will be so upset if I can't find something, she said. I thought Mrs. Brisbane was your favorite teacher ever, her dad said. She'll understand. But Cassie was still upset. The next day, Cassie's mom took her for a long walk around the neighborhood. I crossed my toes and hoped that the exercise would calm her down. I spent the day in my cage, napping, spinning on my wheel, and staring out the window. I missed Og. I missed my classmates. I even missed the specs. That afternoon, while I was thinking about them and looking out the window, I noticed something new. A small brown bird lit on a tree branch and then hopped a few inches, just out of my view. I climbed to the top of my cage. I could see it. The bird hopped farther until I couldn't see it again. So I scurried over to the corner and stretched my neck. The bird was standing on the edge of a nest. A smaller brown bird was inside the nest. My neck was getting tired, but I kept staring at the nest. It was woven out of twigs, bits of mud, fluff, paper, and straw. It was a wonderful sight, and birds' nests are definitely signs of spring. I couldn't wait for Cassie to come back from her walk so she could see it too. When she returned, she looked very, very, very discouraged as she slumped down on her bed. Nothing new, she said. The signs of spring have stopped. I raced to the front of my cage and squeaked, no, 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 there is a bird's nest right outside the window, look. I tried to point, but since Cassie wasn't looking at me, it didn't matter. She sighed. I'll be the only one in room 26 without a new sign of spring. Look outside at the very edge of the window. I squeaked at the top of my lungs. Cassie didn't notice. As wonderful as they are, humans can be very frustrating at times. In fact, I was so frustrated that I jumped up and down. Please look. Cassie glanced over at me and smiled. Oh, Humphrey, you're so cute. Cute? I don't care about being cute. Okay, maybe a little bit. To squeak the truth, I was a little bit upset with Cassie until I realized that from where she was sitting, she couldn't see the tree branch. The curtain was blocking her view. Pull back the curtain, I squeaked. It's right outside the window. Cassie just sighed. Of course, once it was dark outside, there was no chance of Cassie seeing the nest. She left the room to have dinner and watch TV with her family. As she did, I began to think. Squeaking at Cassie wasn't helping at all, since she couldn't understand me. I needed to show her the nest. But how? Later, Cassie came back to her room for bedtime. She read for a while before her dad turned off the light. I hope you're not too disappointed in me, Humphrey Cassie said. Then her breathing changed and I could tell that she was asleep. Her mom had closed the curtain completely when she said goodnight to Cassie, 
but there was a little opening that let some moonlight in. I stared at the moonlight a long time before I came up with a plan. I waited until the house was completely quiet and then I carefully jiggled the lock that doesn't lock on my cage and tiptoed out onto the table. There was only about an inch of space between the table and the windowsill. I held my breath and leaped. Whew, I was positively relieved to land safely. I stopped to catch my breath, then I began to push the curtain away from the window. I had no idea that a curtain could be so heavy. I pushed with all my might and nothing happened. Whoa, I took a deep breath, pushed again, and the curtain slowly began to move. The great thing about those curtains was that when I pushed the left curtain, the right curtain also moved. With a few deep breaths and a few rest stops, I managed to push the curtain as far as it would go. Once I caught my breath, I stopped to look at the moon. And then I looked down. The silvery light was shining on the nest tucked in the branches of the tree. I was closer now and could see much better. I stared for a while because it was so round and cozy, almost as cozy as my little sleeping hut. I crossed my toes and hoped, hoped, hoped that in the morning, Cassie would see the nest too. By the time I returned to my cage and closed the door behind me, I was feeling unsqueakably tired. I sank down into my bed and stared up at the moon until suddenly it was morning. I'd slept through most of the night, which is quite a feat for a hamster. Good morning, Humphrey, Cassie said as she looked at my cage. Don't look at me, look out the window. There's a spectacular sign of spring, I squeaked excitedly. Cassie just yawned. Ready for breakfast? Her dad asked as he poked his head in the doorway. I made pancakes and sausage and biscuits, scrambled eggs and pizza. Really? Cassie flapped her hands excitedly. Her dad laughed. April fools, he said. Didn't look, didn't you look at the calendar? It's April 1st, April Fool's Day. Cassie laughed and then turned serious. What are we really having for breakfast? The good news is we are having pancakes, he said with a smile. Yay! Cassie raced out of the room. Why would Cassie's dad fib about all the things he made for breakfast? Because it was April Fool's Day? Why is there a day to celebrate being foolish? I will never figure out humans. I sighed. The cozy nest was now in plain view. Only Cassie wasn't there to see it. I thought of making a sign saying bird's nest with a big arrow pointing at the window. But if I did that, Cassie would know that I can read and write and get out of my cage. Those are things I like to keep secret. Cassie and her mom came back in in a little while. I'll make the bed if you pick up your clothes, her mom said, and they got to work. Please look out the window, I squeaked. Why is Humphrey squeaking like that? Cassie's mom asked. Cassie giggled. He's talking. Yes, I squeaked at the top of my small lungs. I'm trying to tell you to look out the window. Cassie and her mom just laughed. We're going to stop there for today. I can't wait to see if Humphrey actually gets Cassie to look out the window. We'll read that tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.